Namaste, everyone. My name is Greg Prescott from In5D.com, and I see people are filing in right now. Hello, everyone. Yeah, it's a cool shirt, Bill. I have no idea where I bought this one, but uh, it, it just resonates with me. I love the colors on it, and uh, obviously I wear a lot of tie-dye, if you can't tell. Um, so I'm just seeing everyone that's coming in. Hello, Carl, Bill, Rose, Vera Kocha, Kim, Jill, another Kim, Bren, Lori, Rose, Michael, Stephanie, Tammy, Keegan. Oh my, we have lots of people here. Um, and I'm so grateful and blessed that you're all joining me here once again on N5D Facebook Live. I have a bunch of questions that once again I didn't cover um, from the previous Facebook Live. So I'm trying to catch everything, but as you can tell, at least on my end, I have the questions coming up and people's comments coming up on the right hand side and they just go by so quickly and occasionally, more than occasionally, unfortunately, I miss them. So I'm sorry. Um, I would like to start out with what I do on my walk of gratitude. And uh, I've always encouraged people to make this their own personal thing, uh, change it around if you want, but this is what I do and what I say just to express the gratitude for everybody that's joining me right now. Dear Creator, Source, Universe, Spirit Guides, Guardian Angels, Friends and Family on both sides of the, of the veil, Galactic Neighbors and Friends, Higher Self and Mother Earth. I'm sorry if I don't say this as often as I should. Please forgive me. Thank you for your unconditional love, safety, support, protection, and abundance in everything that's good in life, as I promise to listen with open eyes, ears, mind, and heart. More than anything, I love you. I ask that you help me turn on all the codons in my DNA, along with activating all current and future strands of DNA so I can heal myself and others in humanity's best interest. And then I do a walk of gratitude at that point, but I can also do that from this point forward too. And hopefully all of our posse will join in. And that's where I ask everyone to magnify the loving healing energy that you have in your heart center and send it out as far as you can throughout the planet, galaxy, universe, and multiverse. Wow, we have a lot of people here. <laughs> Thank you so much everyone who's uh, joined in and namaste to you all. So the first thing I have is a comment um, from Marcella Carpenter, and speaking of gratitude, she said, uh, gratitude for this, Greg, your online presence, the sole recognition of your energy, voice, face, is grounding, comforting, is a grounding, comforting connection. I also get the buzzing in my feet and hands while meditating. I get the tingling in my crown chakra and the zapping flash energy that you described as no one else has been able to describe it or understand what I was talking about, it's like an electrical um, feeling. Even the sound you made was the same, namaste. Um, and for those who aren't familiar with what Marcella is talking about, there's times where, and it's hard to, like she said, hard to describe or explain, but it's almost like a kind of feeling that you get in your head you can feel this like electrical charge going off um, and it only lasts like a second or two um, but it happens on occasion maybe I don't know maybe a couple times a year but I haven't heard of anybody else experiencing that until I brought it up and then all of a sudden people were making comments about that and they too have experienced that so if you're experiencing that let me know I'd like to hear if other people have been uh, going through that as well. Hello, Beatrice, Yvonne, Kim Semetis, Susan Worcester, Kendra Gilbert. I love you, Kendra. She was my ex, uh, one of my uh, N5D radio hosts, host number two, and she did such an amazing job. Uh, Linda, Dale, uh, Aldous Becker, Elena K. And Kendra's saying, I actually felt and heard a pop when I did a meditation. So uh, obviously this is happening to more people, but no one's really talking about it. So it's good that we're getting it out there. Once again, I encourage anyone um, 
to look at all the people that are commenting and feel free to comment am amongst yourselves as well. I love seeing that and to friend each other because we're building community and soul family so um, feel free to do that as well. And thank you Marcella Carpenter for the affirmation and confirmation on getting the same kind of feeling and sound that I'm getting as well. So Ella Royer is saying that her body actually constantly vibrates and her crown chakra tingles at random. Been like this for months now. So yeah, this is pretty interesting how you know, a lot of people are experiencing similar but and sometimes a little bit different uh, things as well. Uh, and Christine Bradley thank me for saying the walk of gratitude meditation. You're very welcome. My pleasure. It's my honor actually to be here with all of you right now. And thank you everyone who's listening, uh, whether it's live or the recorded version. And even if you're listening on the recorded version, feel free to leave comments in there because um, I will go back after a few days and I'll see what questions I missed. And if you weren't able to join in live, then uh, I'll catch those questions and we'll do another uh, live feed and hopefully I'll be able to answer them. So, okay, where are we at here? Um, Okay, another question. It's from Adriana Roman, and she's asking, what are your thoughts on walk-ins? Which is a really great question. Um, I made a post not too long ago about uh, walk-ins, and what I said and, uh, in this post was, what if there was no such thing as walk-in souls and you're simply moving from one parallel universe to another? What if it's ac actually you walking into yourself in a different reality. See, that would explain Mandela effects, converging timelines, creating new realities on a different timeline. Um, so what if it was just yourself or a different, different aspect of yourself uh, walking into yourself? Now, I recently had a walk-in um, and you can tell certain little things will change in your life. You'll notice small little changes. Um, the walk-in I have this time apparently likes to sleep without any clothes. <laughs> this is funny because beforehand I would always sleep with uh, sweatpants on, a shirt, I'd wrap myself up in a bunch of blankets and uh, this time, uh, no, it's, uh, I might start out with underwear but it ends off anyway and I'm outside of the blankets. It's, this walk-in doesn't like wearing a lot of clothes apparently. But I also had one time where my daughter and my ex-wife both noticed when I had a walk-in come in and sometimes you're not going to be able to pick it up or notice it or see it as quickly as other people and other times you, you might see that you have like a change in diet all of a sudden you're eating something that you've never liked or eaten beforehand so you're going to see these little tiny changes going on in your life okay this uh, next question comes from Brandy Rochelle Gomez and uh, also, I would like to encourage anyone, if you do have a question, start out with a question mark or two or three. It makes it easier to see. And uh, ask your question. And that way I can see them uh, easier and quicker. And I can tell whether you're asking me or just people in the chat, the live chat that's going on right now. Okay? So, Brandy Rochelle Gomez is asking, could dreams be visiting us? I'm sorry. Could dreams be visiting are parallel timelines. I'm sorry, I read that wrong again. Could dreams be us visiting our parallel timelines? I never understood exactly why we dream. And that's pretty much what I was talking about too, uh, parallel timelines. What if the walk-in was basically yourself walking into yourself into a different parallel timeline? What's happening with this Mandela effect and these uh, changing timelines is Timelines are converging right now into the greatest and highest good of whatever timeline it is that's in humanity's greatest and highest good. And what we're seeing is um, these timelines, as they converge, little things are changing. And that's how we get the Mandela effect. Uh, you can find out a lot more about the Mandela effect on N5D in the search box, upper right hand corner. Just type in Mandela effect and you, know, you can read it there. Also, higher selves and uh, walk in souls. Um, a lot of stuff we're going to be talking about today. Just do a search on N5D, you'll find everything there. But uh, 
para- so could our dreams be us visiting our parallel timelines? Heck yeah. Here's a question for you guys listening right now. Have you ever felt like your dreams are more real than your real life? I know for me, yeah, big time. Uh, it seems like your dreams are, you're more in touch rea- with reality. And actually what reality is, is if you think about it, when you dream, you never really know what time it is. You're, you're outside of time. So when you ha- you're having those dreams, you're able to transcend time. Time is a construct of the third dimension, you know, and it really traces back to Saturn, Kronos, Father Time, Saturnalia, and all the uh, stuff that Saturn's associated with, including religion. Uh, work weeks, schedules, TV schedules, you know, it's all boxed in time. But time is only relevant to the planet we live on because, and this is a great example, on Mars, an average day is, I think, 28 or 29 hours. So right now I'm 56, but on Mars, I might only be 47 (laughs) years old. So you can see how time is only relevant to uh, wherever you are um, on this planet. So I hoped that answered your question, Brandy. I, I do think that our dreams could be us visiting ourselves on parallel timelines. Also, I don't know about you guys either. Um, I've mentioned this before about lucid dreaming, and I was very interested in astral projection and lucid dreaming. I had that one incident that I explained on one of the previous Facebook Lives where I was lifting out of my body, finally, after starting to astral project, and my cell phone rang, which is one of the cardinal sins of uh, what you don't want to do when you're uh, trying to, to astral project. So just like, just like uh, that as well, I was, I was shown that this isn't for me, I'm not supposed to be doing this. Um, lucid dreaming's a little bit different where you're actually in your dream and you're controlling your dream. This is a, you know, a, at night while you're dreaming, you have total control over your dream. You can do anything you want, go anywhere you want. But the reason I don't do that either is I get a lot of my visions about what's going to happen in the future through my dreams as well as through the third eye and waking visions that I get as well so I don't want to change that and I felt that if I were able to lose a dream I might not be getting the same message Uh, so that's why I don't do that Eric Johnson is asking have you ever seen a UFO in the daylight yes I bet a lot of you have that are listening right now have too. Uh, I, and here's a great example. Sometimes, and many times, this will happen. They'll show themselves to those who are ready. And you could be with someone, and it could be the biggest UFO on the planet, as bright as, bright as daylight outside, and this huge object's up, up there, and you're pointing directly at it, and the person you're with can't see it. And that happened with me one time with my daughter. We were driving back. I picked her up from school, and we're driving back, and I could see this UFO way off in the distance, but it was easy to, easy to see because there was a billboard there, and it was, was kind of like right above the right upper right-hand side of the billboard. So I'm like, Britt, check out that UFO, and she couldn't see it. I don't think she was ready then, and she was only maybe, I don't know, 10, 11, 12 years old, something like that, but she did not see it, and it was huge. It was big. Another time I was, uh, and this wasn't a, a nighttime, uh, this was, wasn't a daytime one, but it was a nighttime one, where I was at my parents' house and I had this older pair of night vision goggles. And uh, my sister, uh, Tara, was there and I saw this huge UFO and you couldn't miss it, but unless you were Tara. <laughs> she, I don't think she was ready to see it, even though she wanted to see it. They just weren't showing themselves to her. It was huge. And you know, I'd let her see it, and she couldn't see it. And I'd take it back, and I'd pinpoint exactly where it is, give it back to her. She couldn't see it, but yeah, I've been seeing UFOs since um, the first one I saw. Actually, was uh, twilight. Um, it was probably around eight o'clock in the summertime, so it was still light out. And it was in Oneonta, and I talked about this on the last Facebook Live, where these three came up over uh, Franklin Mountain in formation. They hovered, and then. Pew, took right off and there was eight of us there and we were about to have a keg party we had the keg we were waiting for the tap so 
the tap wasn't there, so none of us were drinking at, the, at that point, but we all saw that, and it was something that uh, stays in the back of my mind. That was my first daylight the there, so sighting. None of us were drinking at Hang on. Anyway, so moving on. I actually have two questions here, and I'll read them both. One is from Tammy Young, and she says, how do I discover my purpose? And Julie Rogers, who's saying, how do we, who's asking, how do we manifest our higher purpose? And I have an article on N5D that I wrote about how to find your life purpose, so you can check that out as well. Um, and what, uh, what I mentioned on that article is look at your interests and activities. Um, what are you interested in? When I was younger, I was interested, I remember seeing that one book in the back of a magazine that taught you how to astral project, and that's when I bought that book. Saved up $4, stuck it in an envelope, mailed it out in the summertime when my parents weren't home, checked the mailbox every day before my parents would, and eventually I got that book. Never learned how to astral project then, and as it turned out, I wasn't supposed to, but that showed me my interest, not necessarily in astral projection, but for the metaphysics and you know this this field that I'm in. So at an early age, I've always had this interest. Uh, number two, expect to fall on your face. We're going to make mistakes. Uh, I know as a therapist, um, I was a child and family therapist uh, when I got my what I can only call as a uh, galactic download after watching The Secret, and. Uh, I had a patent pending program designed to help families who are at risk of dissolution, children going through the reunification process, and for parents in need of parenting classes, but I knew there was so much more I had to do in life. And so I went out there and like what they said in, uh, in The Secret is, you know, ask the universe for ideas and suggestions, and I did, and that's when I got that, you know, what I call a galactic download that led me to building I N5D and even gave me the name N5D. But along the way, you're going to make mistakes, and you learn from them. So don't get frustrated over these mistakes. Um, learn from them and know that you, you still are on your path. These mistakes are only making you stronger and to help you learn more to get you where you need to be. Uh, number three is once you've found your path, allow it to grow. Um, and that's, once again, I'll use N5D as an example. I built N5D in 2009. and. Uh, I remember, gosh, when I first started out, maybe even three, four months into it, I was only getting maybe 3,000 people <laughs> a month. You know, I get more than that in an hour <laughs> right now, but uh, and which is really cool. But you need it needs time to grow. So you know, have faith in yourself and uh, know that you are on your path. If that's what you're truly feeling inside, just keep persevering because it'll work out. And as I mentioned. Um, when I've talked about the secret, this is number four, ask the universe for ideas, direction, and purpose. And not only will you get that, you, you might also get, and this happens to me, I don't know if it happens to anyone else, but I get lots of ideas for other people. Because all of a sudden, the veil kind of lifts. And you can see when you're talking to people, you know, hey, have you ever thought about heading in this direction? Because you've seen their interests and what they're passionate about. And even though it's right in front of their face, they might not, they might not see it. So, you know, you, I, I, I get that all the time. So that's one thing I, I enjoy doing is helping other people as well. Uh, filter the ideas, because you're going to get a lot of them. Um, and not all ideas will be your life purpose, but they will lead you toward it. Okay? Learn from your mistakes um, or learning experiences, because they're not really mistakes. Uh, you're just... You know, making these, having these experiences to help guide you along the way. You know, and each one is basically a stepping stone. Uh, and you're not racing against anyone. Don't feel the pressure like, you, you, oh, I got to be uh, in 5D or whatever, you know, or as big as whatever website. It's not, it's not a race. And I like using the analogy of going for a walk on the beach. Not everyone is walking at the same pace. Some are walking a lot faster. Some are walking a lot slower. Walk at your pace, work at your pace, make your pace comfortable. Uh, clear the clutter is uh, number eight on the steps on finding your life purpose. And for me, I was a huge sports fanatic um, right up until 
I watched The Secret. And after that, I still watch NFL football. But outside of that, I could care less about sports. Or, you know, watching it on TV at least. I still like playing them. But I have a, what I call a semi-photographic memory where I can look at the sports page, just glance at it, and I can tell you who's third in, Amer in the American League in baseball in doubles or who's fifth in ERA and how many, you know, what, what that ERA is. Or, and it didn't matter what sport, you know, if, as long as I just glanced at it, I would remember it. But that was clutter. <laughs> I was cluttering my mind with crap, basically. And uh, once I started, once I really started putting the secret the law of attraction uh, into effect, then uh, the clutter left. And, and that also helps, you know, if you meditate, that helps to clear the clutter as well. So definitely recommend uh, meditation if you have an overactive mind. I also have an article on N5D, how to clear the overactive mind, where I get more ideas on that too. So check that one out as well. Um, express gratitude. The universe loves gratitude. That's why I always do that walk of gratitude when I when I go to the beach. Uh, I often will be heard saying, thank you universe for the smallest things that come into your life. A great parking spot on a busy day always seems to manifest for me. As soon as, as, soon as I get that parking spot, thank you universe. And last, make it enjoyable. Uh, if, if you're doing something and it's like for me, it's a hobby. It's, this isn't work. Chatting with you guys on a Saturday isn't work. Doing all the work I do do, you know, 10 to 15 plus hours every day, 365 days a year, it's really not work. It's a hobby. It's fun. So do something that you enjoy doing and you'll never work a day in your life. Now this is a quote from Dolores Cannon, the late Dolores Cannon. She said, the side effect of doing something you love, what you're supposed to be doing, is perfect health. When you're in tune with what you're supposed to be doing, you don't get sick. There you go. So what I'm going to do right now is I have some angel cards. In the past, the past couple times, I've been doing the Goddess Guidance Oracle cards. This time, we're going to be doing the uh, Diana Cooper, Cooper Angels of Light cards. And what I'm going to do is to intend that this card gives us all the message we need to hear today. Or if you're listening to this on the recorded version as well. So let me just shuffle these up a little and see what we get. I'm putting that intention in right now that we all get the message that we need to hear through this Angel of Light Oracle card. Okay. <laughs> light okay see if I can hold it up and read it at the same time light illuminates darkness and gloom bringing hope and inspiration ask the angels to fill you with more light for it contains spiritual information and knowledge these are keys to the universe and bring love and peace as well as unlocking the wisdom within you as your light becomes stronger and clearer you will find clarity and purpose you will also radiate brightly and become a beacon reminding others of the, the divine help available. Angel Wisdom suggests you ask the angels to ignite and strengthen the divine flame within you. And the affirmation is, I am light. So thank you universe once again for a beautiful message to be shared amongst everyone. And thank you all for being part of that angel card reading. Moving on, uh, I have a question from Ella Royer, and she says, I'm working on a project which I feel will benefit society. It isn't going very well, and I don't know if it's even part of my highest joy. And Ella, um, looking back at what I just said about your life purpose, um, go through that. And check out, and please check out that article in full on N5D, How to Find Your Life Purpose, and uh, you'll know you'll know if, you, if there's any questions about it you know maybe it's not but it's always guiding you to what your life purpose is this might be whatever it is you're doing right now might be a stepping stone to exactly what you need to be doing in the future 
you have to go within right now. You're the only one that knows the answer to that, but um, keep all options open and available. Now these two are together, and this is a really cool question, all right? Um, and the first one's from Teresa Rose Trent, and she says, speak more about the city of light, Sarasota. I'm in Florida and have always been drawn to that area. I seem to always be within a mile or two of the ocean. Bimini is also especially special to me for, the, for some reason. And then Debbie King says, or asks, where are the other cities of light? They're seated, as far as I know, they're seated with intention. Um, when you put your intention into it, that's how you manifest a city of light. And I'll, I'll explain a little bit more about that. I want to show you this picture, and I'll, I'll, I'll show it again here in a second. But this is uh, the prism of light in Sarasota. And uh, right here is Siesta Key. And it goes all the way from Bradenton all the way down to below Venice, Florida. And it's this diamond-shaped uh, prism of light that's um, this whole area. And this is really cool. And I got this from an article called Prism of Light. Uh, I'm sorry, it's called Sarasota, A Crystal City of Light. So you can look this up on, on the internet. And I'm just going to read a, a small excerpt from that. And it says, in the beginning of 2008, from the world of ideas and dreams, a vision unfolded over the next six months, becoming clearer as time went by. The vision from the unseen worlds and dimensions showed that a future generation city of light would emerge. The city would be filled with love, light, healing, writing, art, and music. The foundation already existed, but the seed for Sarasota as a crystal city of light was to be planted on the summer solstice of 2008. It was to be one of the 22 planetary crystal cities of light that would become light beacons and sacred sites for future generations of Earth. So, as I mentioned, that's what the uh, prism, the diamond-shaped prism looks like. So what happened, <coughs> excuse me, 222 people gathered at four points of the diamond all along the facets of the prism at noon on June 20th, 2008. It was to be one of the, I'm sorry, men, women, and children gathered on the beaches, in forests, in gardens, and, and at seven spiritual centers. They held the consciousness that each of us was a prism within the greater prism. With bells, rattles, drums, and tonings, they proclaimed that each person present was a reflection of the light and love of the work each was called to do. They professed their intentions to seed the future city of light in Sarasota, where healing, teaching, alternative medicine, art, music, and writing would be guided and infused by, uh, by spirit. So to answer your question, yeah, that's exactly what they did here in Sarasota. They, through intention, created the city of light. Now, keep in mind that what better place to have it because Sarasota has this 99.9% .9 quartz crystal sand, which has its own energy within itself. Um, it's perfect. I, I firmly believe what they're saying. Now, so they did that on the summer solstice in 2008. A week later, this is what pops up on a crop circle. Now, all right, check it out. We got this. I don't know if I'm doing this very well in front of a camera. Um, let's tilt it that way. And then we have this. So there, there we have it, kind of. <laughs> it's the best I can do on camera. But I can just hold them up like that. Let's see. This one would go kind of, I don't know. Everything's backwards on the screen, so i got to do it backwards like that. There, there you go. There's the diamonds. And on the crop circle one, check it out. Whoops, wrong one. <laughs> portals are popping up. We got portals in there. And that's going to lead us to our next question. B before we do, uh, last year, this is interesting that the first question mentioned Bimini is also especially special for Teresa Rose Trent. Uh, we, a bunch of us got together to do a, uh, a meditation in Bimini last year 
on the summer solstice, um, including Michelle Walling and Londa Curtis. And Londa ended up being one of our speakers at the uh, N5D uh, conference that we had in Austin, Texas in April. And we met, made a lot of great connections there. Um, so I thought it was really ironic and very synchronistic that uh, she would bring up Bimini um, as well. We did there, we found in Bimini, we found the, uh, what we believed and we asked the locals about that, um, what Edgar Casey called the road uh, to Atlantis there. And we did uh, a special meditation right there on the beach with a number of us who got together and uh, placed our thoughts and intentions there. So I understand what you're saying. Bimini is a very special place and I can understand why you're being drawn to go there or look more into it. Oh, getting back also um, to the numerology. Uh, I was talking a little about this, but that article that I was talking about called Sarasota, A Crystal City of Light, it goes on to mention the numerology of Sarasota. And this is another reason why Sarasota will be one of the 22 cities of light. Florida is a master number 11 reflecting brotherly love on a grand scale. Sarasota, if you do the numerology, you know, each letter has a number associated to it. You break it down. Sarasota is a master number 22, reflecting the ability to manifest easily as the master builder, ambassador, and diplomat. And then Siesta Key is a master number 33, reflecting the spiritual teacher of high consciousness connecting with the oversoul. So what a, what a great place. If you're going to have a, a city of light, right here's a great place three master numbers right there okay so and once again this this one's gonna come in handy too um, Nikki Colombo's asking where's the Stargate in Sarasota well the first conference we had uh, in 5d conference was in Lido Key right there um, which is a little north of Siesta Key but they still have uh, the beautiful white sand beaches there and uh, Lisa Renee was one of our speakers and there was a, a portal there that she had to close because the malevolence were using that to come in and out. When we asked her if she wanted to be a speaker there, she said, hell yeah, because there was some work she had to do down here. So it worked out in uh, everyone's best interest. Um, but there's a huge, massive portal here. And there's another one right off the beach, maybe uh, seven miles out. that. Uh, all the locals talk about so there are several of them that are, that are very powerful okay uh, Valerie Mahan Mahan M-A-H-O-N is asking what are your thoughts on the connection between Ireland and Egypt well Michael Cesarian talks about the ancient Egyptians in Ireland I don't know a lot about it but I know he does he does talk a lot about it and I, I believe he said that um, there are constructions there um, in Ireland that outdate the pyramids in age and that even the name Egypt came from Ireland but that's about all I know about that so I, I couldn't tell you much more I'd highly recommend researching Michael Tessarian and uh, T Michael Tessarian Egypt Ireland and you'll you'll find the exact um, article that I was reading Okay, Susan Worcester is asking why are orbs different colors? Well, orbs are spheres of energy and energy vibrates. Energy vibrates at you know, different colors and levels. You know, that, look at your chakras. And you know, when, when your chakras light up, uh, that's energy light, lighting up. Um, there are different meanings that you'll find on the internet about what orb colors mean. A lot of people believe that like the white orbs will be archangels or you know, higher presences uh, of a galactic nature. Um, and there's one, I have an article called All About Orbs, and uh, there's a chart there that I like referring to myself. And uh, for example, white silver means a pure new high frequency, protection, strength, power, and it may apply to an ascended master, a guardian angel, or an archangel. This is Michelle Walling here. She'll be joining us here in a second. Um, I had, I, I was doing this third eye meditation where I'm staring at, I have a candle in front of me, lights are off, mirrors in front of me, and I'm focusing on my third eye. 
and uh, I'm in this. I'm going. I'm watching my my face transform into all previous aspects of myself and everything. All of a sudden, this or, orange orb starts hovering, and it, it was about that big, hovering over my left shoulder. So let's read what the orange has to say. Comfort, healing energy, motivation, hope, strength, and courage. Now, it was interesting because when I did that meditation, the third eye mirror meditation, once again, check out N5D. I've got this article on how to do it. I only recommend this for people that are advanced. Um, if you're just beginning, I don't recommend it. But um, after that, and I noticed it said hope, strength, and courage, especially the courage. What happened was I was doing that third eye mirror meditation. I'm seeing my, myself transform into all these different beings. And then this ogre-like being came in front of me, big red eyes and fang-like teeth. And it was staring at me. And what I did at the time, I said, you're not welcome here. I ask that you leave immediately. Only those of the highest vibration of truth, love, and light are welcome. But what I should have done was giving him the opportunity to at least say who he was maybe or uh, help him find the light and see what his purpose was here I, I judged him and that wasn't right you know because I just because it looked scary I mean heck I could have looked scary to him what if everybody looked like him and then I appeared in front of him in front of his mirror he'd be like oh my god <laughs> so yeah that so definitely check that out um, on N5D to learn more about orbs. You'll find everything on there about orbs. Okay, where am I at? Um, can you, uh, Andrea is asking, can you speak on romantic relationships from a spiritual perspective? And what a lot of people are searching for are their twin flames. Um, and I have to tell you that not all twin flames incarnate with you. Mine didn't. I don't, yours didn't either, did it? No. Neither of ours did. But that doesn't mean you can't find love and that your twin flame doesn't want you to, to be love and experience love while, while you're here. Okay? So, I've seen my twin flame. I've seen her smile. I know what it looks like, but she didn't incarnate with me. And that's not a bad thing because they're helping us as well from the other side of the veil. So we have, what better help can you have than you know, your angels, guys, your twin flame on the other side? And all they want you to do is experience as much as you can, obviously, but to find love as well while you're here. Susan's saying, I love that you and Greg are both wearing tie-dyed shirts, so cool. And I have to say, we didn't even know what we were wearing. I didn't know what you were wearing <laughs> when I got dressed. No, originally I had an orange shirt on, yeah. but I was outside for a little. I was making uh, lunch, and uh, I, I started sweating through the shirt, so I just changed it into this one. <laughs> so had no clue what he was wearing. Yeah. We do that a lot, though. Um, and here's one from Chelsea Wiley. I have extremely vivid dreams regularly, fighting beasts and conquering them, and I'm not afraid. When I have dreams of cats, though, I am terrified. <laughs> Are cats a symbol for something negative in my life? And this is what, you know, if you look at a typical dream analysis, on cats, it might say that you know, especially in relation to what you're experiencing right now. Like you think of, you know, if a cat's going to be fighting, it's probably a feral cat, and it's out wandering the streets and something like that. So a typical dream analysis uh, reading on that dream might say you might have concerns about your significant other, uh, maybe meandering around and you know not being perhaps loyal to you or whatever. But what I'm getting from this is there's something locked into your cellular DNA that you are probably from Sirius or had been fighting Syrians and it's locked into your cellular DNA through, it's probably the Orion's war, Orion Wars that you were going through and you haven't released it yet. So what I highly recommend is to forgive yourself and your past lives and release it. And I think that those dreams will uh, go away. Did you have something to add on that? No, I was reading the comments on the twin flame, and someone did make the comment that um, your twin flame can actually walk in to, to someone else when the time is right, hmm. rather than incarnate and send that aspect into, um, into this reality. They wait until you are, have reached a certain point where you can uh, vibrate at that level, and they can walk into someone and, and braid with that soul and you can share that with someone else. That's, that's a very special thing. 
Another point about um, walk-ins too is, um, and that's a great example because chances are that twin flame is not going to walk in until your vibration is high enough to be able to accept that and merge with the twin flame's vi vibration as well. But um, you, you typically it's almost like an upgrade when you get these walk-ins because they typically happen when you're sleeping and they'll test you out <laughs> sometimes. They'll enter your body, test you out, read your cellular DNA and get a feeling from, for who you are and try to make that match as much as possible. But what they're doing is they're bringing in fresh light and higher light. So it's, it's more like a, a, it's almost like getting a DNA upgrade, but it's infusing your body with even more light to prepare you for the next stage of spiritual evolution. And helping everyone else on the earth as well. Mm -hmm. And the earth. Joe Hill has a question. Have you ever been abducted? <laughs> I haven't, but um, I got a great story for you. Um, my sister, Lola, she's not with us anymore. Her boyfriend, Dave, who's not with us anymore, and their friend, Patty, were up in upstate New York, and they're driving to East Sydney Dam. And the next thing they know, it's four or five hours later, and their car's on the side of the road. None of them have any recollection of what happened, how they got there, and what happened with the missing time. So my sister firmly believed that there was something, and she always wanted to have a uh, past life regression to uh, see what happened, but she never had that done. But I'm pretty sure that's what happened. Another interesting thing is my sisters and I all have this one mark in the back of our head that's in the same spot. And I always wonder about that, if it was like some kind of implant from our galactic star family or something I don't know but yeah um, so maybe you have been abducted and just don't remember that's true that's true I, I, I have had dreams about being on the mothership but that's not being abducted. And there's a difference between being abducted and visiting your star family going up on the ship to um, to get another positive tracking device so they keep track of you and know where you're at because they're not in true. They're not in here. It's hard for them to see. Yeah. And also for some healing, and Cleansing, they cleaning. they they can do they can put you in the healing chambers on mm -hmm. the ship and help you out and um, just help you work through some of the um, traumas that you've had mm -hmm. in your incarnation. Okay. So, uh, hmm. This good question from Robin Larson. Hi, Londa. <laughs> Londa. Robin's asking, what will happen to our U.S. military members who were snipers in the wars in Afghanistan, Afghanistan and Iraq, etc.? They believed they were protecting our country and that if they didn't get the enemy, the enemy would get them, karmically speaking, that is. That's a great question. I think that it really boils down to what a lot of people, including Dolores Cannon, talks about is the 51 percent and, and it boils down to you know if you feel like you're doing things that are in the greatest and highest good even though they might not necessarily be good things but because of the situation you were placed in you're sold a lie to bring you into war and then all of a sudden you're doing what you feel is the right thing I think that plays into it a great deal I, I think that there's a lot of souls out there and good people out there that are doing things that they feel they have to do, for example, there's people that are just looking for a job and they might take a job at, at a bank as a bank teller, even though, you know, the banks and money is like, the, we all want to live without that crap, but uh, they're doing the best they can doing what they're doing and their heart's in the right place. They're, they're using that money to support their family and food, just like the, these soldiers are doing the same thing to support their country and, and in turn support their family. and. They're doing the best they can, and I think as long as their heart is in the right place, not to worry about it. Nikki Colombo is asking, what's the number one question you are asked? What's going to happen? <laughs> when are we going to ascend? Uh, what, you know, that, that's probably the most... Oh, got a puppy dog over here. Sammy. Yep, there's Sammy. In 5D mascot. Hi, buddy. <laughs> But yeah, a lot of people are asking about you know what to expect, and uh, we have so much on N5D about that. And every time I get a dream or a vision, I'll share that with you on what hasn't happened yet, and uh, we'll see where it goes. 
but I have, to, I have a feeling that a lot of you already know what's going to happen and that we're on the precipice of something really big. So, um, This is a good one from Jenna Sheehan. She goes, what music makes you feel happy? <laughs> That's easy. Yeah. <laughs> well, we should have wore our Van Halen shirts. <laughs> we went to see Van Halen last year, I think it was last year, in Tampa when, with, with uh, David Lee Roth as the singer. And we both, in different states, saw the Monsters of Rock concert when Van Halen headlined that. And that was with Sammy Hagar as the lead singer. But it really doesn't matter. You can, you know, you listen to music, whatever music makes you feel good. And that's going to raise your vibration, no matter what the lyrics sound like. You know, There's some Van Halen songs that I love. One's called Ain't Talking About Love. It's the antithesis, antithesis of everything I represent and believe in. But I love that song. It makes me feel good. I love the flow of it. I love the guitar, the lead. It's a great song. And here's here's <laughs> here's a great example of we were at the tiki bar the other night. We went out and uh, had dinner, and we um, had a a cocktail with our dinner. And they put them in plastic cups so you can walk out the bar with them. So we walked out the bar, across the street, and what song came in our hand or into our heads? Got a drink in my hand, oh, yeah. got my toes in the sand. <laughs> a Van Halen song. We both both sang that and laughed, and it, it's a positive vibration. So, whatever music makes you feel happy is the answer. But he is a hard rock musician, and he he he's a very good guitar player, and he likes he likes hard rock. I do, I do. Thank you. <laughs> no, I'm not going to play right now. Oh. <laughs> I can talk and you can go kick your tar. I, you could, but it's not going to happen. Um, okay. Sammy's making himself, making his bed open. Yes. So that's what that scratching is. So Susan Margaret Parker is asking, do you believe in divine timing? I am experiencing plenty of delays. Yeah, I do. Um, everything that's happening is giving you an opportunity to grow. And these delays are telling you maybe there's something you might need to work on right now. And maybe the delays are just something that's really positive anyway. And here's a great example. I was going to Crescent Beach one time and the traffic was horrible. It took about 20, 25 minutes to get there. In the past, maybe 20, 30 years ago, I'd be all pissed off. I'm like, Jesus Christ, why can't the traffic move and why solve? You know, now I, I always know that something there's a reason why it's it's happening. And so it took about 20, 25 minutes. I, I go to this parking lot, which only has about maybe 20, 25 parking spots. And uh, as soon as I pull into the parking lot, the best spot available, the guy's backing out. And I knew it. And, and I got the best spot. And I just said, thank you, universe. Some, it'll something, there's a reason why something's being delayed right now. It's on its way though, whatever it is, as long as your thoughts and intentions are putting it out there of something that you want to manifest, whatever that might be, it's on, it's on its way. Okay. And uh, Sandra Gregg is asking, are you in the water? As you are in the water, do you become a conduit? Does your body want to start doing somersaults, swaying forwards or backwards? I think I'll let you answer this question. Um, are you, in, as you're in the water, Yeah. do you become a conduit? Well, uh -huh. water is definitely a conduit and uh, she's asking if, if you want to start doing somersaults. Does it make your well, body sway back and forth? Does it do something to your body? She's asking. I float in the water without having to to do anything, so I don't. I'm not so sure. Well, you get a lot of inspiration when you're in the shower, when you're in the water. I get totally connected when I'm in the water. Mm -hmm. So if that makes you do somersaults or want to float around, absolutely. Does yeah. it make your body feel any sensations? I think is what she's getting. It makes me feel like I'm in the womb again. It makes me feel like I'm home. Mm -hmm. It makes me feel cleansed. It makes me feel grounded. So yeah. Okay. I've never. I guess as a kid, I think that's why kids really like to be in the water and do somersaults and stuff. So I would highly suggest being kid-like again. Well, also, what Michelle was just saying, that she gets this inspiration when she's in the shower. So, what? and you were, you were mentioning, do you become a conduit? Yeah, I, the answer is yes. yes. As long as you Huge. put that in, you know, 
I think even subconsciously, you don't necessarily even have to put that intention out. But subconsciously, if you're putting that intention out there, yes. So, okay. So right now we're going to do a rock of the week. Michelle's going to do a rock of the week. We're going to rock out. We're going to rock out. <laughs> uh, we've been doing this. I've had a different rock the last two weeks, and this week's rock is show. obsidian. Mm -hmm. And the reason why we chose obsidian is because um, Greg's always talking about the importance of grounding. And as you as you guys know, he spends a lot of time at the beach. And that's where he gets his grounding and centering. And he also does his love bubble, sending everybody on the beach, you know, love and helping. Uh, I think the beach pretty much takes away um, people's troubles. There's people that come from all over the world to be on the the quartz crystal sand beaches here and and they're you know on vacation or they just need to get away and you know get some of that salt water the salt water as well and the negative ions are huge but if you can't get to the beach you can get some obsidian and we have three three obsidians that we found now obsidian is um, a glass it's a volcanic natural glass and as you can see it's shiny and it's going to be uh, this one happens to be polished and this one happens to have a very interesting dent in it I don't understand uh, where that came from but um, I, I just I like the way it feels we also have a couple of turtles here <laughs> this is a, a an obsidian turtle that Greg has and it also has some abalone uh, in it as well and some other some other minerals and things um, so you can have that by your bedside or where you work put it on your computer and um, then we also have this other cute little turtle here this one came from Tulum Mexico and he still has the sticker on it so he knows where he got it from do we have an issue with the yeah, it looks like our battery's running low. Okay. I think we're okay though right if, now. If it's we plugged cut in. off, you'll know what happens. Yes. That's why I wanted to mention it. Yes. Okay, it says it's plugged in, but it's not charging. Yeah. Okay. So I better talk quick. Yeah. Um, obsidian is a very protective stone, and it's excellent for removing negativity. It's also excellent protection against psychic attacks. So I think right now a lot of people are going through some of this and um, get some obsidian out. In particular, obsidian protects the, gen the gentle from abuse. And it's used to uh, cut attachment cords to release a person. So, as I said, it's very grounding and it's also very healing. And it's also an excellent manifestation stone. Psychically, physically, it's said to benefit the stomach, intestines, muscle tissue, and can rid one of bacterial or viral infections. And one of my Facebook friends today said that she's had this thing in her throat for about three weeks and a lot of us who are speaking uh, speaking out we're trying to clear um, our throats and uh, she said when she went to the doctor and the doctor thought it may be viral infection so that was this morning and when we looked when we were choosing the stone trying to look figure out which one to have um, obsidian we were looking this up the first one and it said um, can get rid of bacterial or viral infections so we knew that this is the stone that you guys needed today Mm -hmm. It also sharpens and focuses internal and external vision and helps get in touch with buried issues before they explode. Obsidian is related primarily to the root chakra, though differing colors may relate to different chakras as well. So that's obsidian. This is, this is the stone for this session. Get yourself some obsidian. Put it under your mattress. Meditate with it. Um, put it by your workspace, um, put it where, where you're sleeping, and it'll help you out a lot. Awesome. Thank you for the rock of the week. Uh, so we have a, uh, another question, and I, I thought Michelle would be really good at answering this one because okay. she's the queen of s star seeds. Oh, yes. Uh, so we have, it's from Lamo, L-H-A-M-O, Yeo, Y-E-O-H, Lamo Yeo. Uh, greetings from Singapore. Wow. Please speak about star seeds. More in-depth info about DNA upgrades and different timelines. Okay, well, I'll just try to be quick because I don't know how long we're going to last. Is that um, is the thing actually on the? Um... Let's check while you're answering. Okay, great. 
So, we're receiving a lot of energy right now from the cosmos because of the galactic alignment that we're in right now. This was all part of the plan to receive this energy and to activate our DNA by bringing that light in. Today we got the light card, the light angel card. When we receive the light, it turns on more of our codons and our DNA. It brings more information in and allows us to uh, allows us to have uh, are we do, are we good we're good okay it allows us to receive more information it allows us to receive the knowledge that we need um, our main goal as a star seed is to ground those energies into the planet into the human collective and um, so that we can help other people uh, activate their DNA and it's like a domino effect like the hundred monkey effect here so um, different timelines different timelines so what we're doing I think is we're merging several different timelines into the now and that includes healing other lifetimes that we may be having at the same time because outside of this reality in the higher dimensions fifth dimensional and higher even the fourth dimension the fourth dimension is time but the fifth dimension and higher there is no such thing as time so everything all of your lifetimes are happening at the same time so in order to um, join your higher self or your higher selves, we're actually collapsing timelines and we're collapsing all of the timelines where the dark has been uh, ruling this planet um, and has been, the pendulum has swung so far out of control with the dark that we're having to collapse a lot of these timelines just by being here. and. Um, that's where the Mandela effect occurs when several we're jumping timelines we're time travelers we do all this stuff without even realizing it in 3d but our higher selves and the higher being part of us uh, knows what it's doing and um, I would say that star seeds are literally time travelers time jumpers and uh, DNA we're activating our DNA and we are in turn DNA activators for others well, we're, I'm trying to catch up on some of the questions here. Um, and here's one, if you want to read it. Greg and Michelle. This is from Michelle. Nice name. Michelle Hebert McDonald. I'm dealing with having to separate myself and continue on with the one person who I thought would be with me on this journey. Not a romantic relationship, but the most important relationship I nurtured, and now we are no longer spiritually in sync. He harbors anger, blame, and money obsession, and my life is free of all of those. I can no longer stay and smooth over things. Does this happen to anyone else? Well, since I happen to be a starseed uh, life coach, holistic life coach, um, I would say absolutely it does. Um, but what I want to talk about, this, this is something that came up in my session today with, with a young lady that um, we talked for a couple hours on the phone today. What happens is every single relationship that we have is in our life for a reason. And they are gifts. They are here to help us see what we are not willing to get rid of. So yes, there's sometimes there's a vibrational mismatch. Of course that happens. But as you begin to master this reality, and here you are, at this wonderful vibration. Here you are, you've activated your DNA, you're starting to become psychic, you have this aura and energy about you that's amazing. What are you going to do? Are you just going to sit in the house and sit with yourself and say, okay, I've done it, I'm ready to ascend and sit here and twiddle your thumbs? Or are you going to get out and start relationship with all of humanity and share your vibration? I think part of mastering and ascending and being um, able, being a walking master is being able to insert yourself again back into 3D and be able to relate to anyone on this planet, having respect for them, respect for their path, respect for the vibration they're on, but still be able to be friends with them and give them unconditional love and be in a loving, caring relationship. Sometimes you can step back into that especially if you feel that it's wrong, that you should not be separated and you're confused because here you are ascending and this person isn't, does not mean that you can't have a relationship. Sometimes it's showing you not to put yourself on a pedestal, 
not that you are personally, but it's a good lesson not to put yourself on a pedestal and think that you're uh, better than someone else. What it's showing you is that you're not mastering being multidimensional and being able to be 5D and 3D at the same time and show unconditional love. You know, a lot of times I, I, I see that twin flames, they, they get together and they end up breaking up anyway. So uh, it's, sometimes we've all heard that poem by that anonymous person, a, a reason, a season, or a lifetime. And sometimes it's, it just breaks down to that, that it might be a reason that you're together and just a season. And sometimes it might be a lifetime, but in each situation, you know, you just have to take it one by one and realize that each one is the experience that you're learning and ultimately the only lesson you're here to learn is love. I think Greg is a really good example of someone who um, is happy with himself and happy with his lifestyle and the things. And when you're truly happy with yourself, then you can be happy in any relationship. Mm -hmm. I think he's a really good example of that. I think you guys can feel that. Thank you. We have another question here. Uh, from Lynn McMillan Robley. Can you speak on partners and how your partner may affect your life purpose? Can entanglement hinder if your purposes are in the opposite direction? Okay, so how your partner can affect your life purpose. Well, I think that anytime you're giving your power away to anyone else affecting your life, you're not truly standing as a master. I think at this point, as Starseeds, we're here to master this reality. And um, so it would be a good lesson if you're allowing your partner to affect your life purpose. Are you being a sovereign being? Are you standing in your power? And um, if so, and that's still hindering, then that's when you have to make that decision um, for your highest and best good, what feels right to you, as to whether you need to continue to have that relationship with your partner or not. So I wouldn't let anyone affect what I do for humanity, including life coaching, my How to Max Exit the Matrix website. Greg would never let anything come in between him and N5D and his life purpose here. So when you really know what your life purpose is, nothing should stand in between that. What's the second half of that? Can entanglement hinder if your purposes are in opposite directions? Do you understand that question? Mm -mm. Not that part, but on the first part, um, a lot of it may boil down to control. And I'm not one for controlling anyone. You'll rarely ever hear me say, you need to. I'm not saying I, I never do, but it's a rare, rare, rare situation. You need to do this. I'll put it out as a suggestion. Maybe you might think about trying this. Um, but when you start controlling that other person, you're going to have these um, negative feelings. Nobody wants to be controlled like that, I don't think. And uh, so sometimes that can be an issue in a relationship, um, especially when it does affect your life purpose. Um, I would never tell you, you need to do this with your website. This is your website. You've been guided to do exactly what you need, you've been doing, and that's, that's what I encourage. So it's more about the support that you give without the control more than anything else, I think. So. Are we <laughs> skipping? Someone says we're skipping like a record. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> okay. We've, and that, that was way back because we have so much that I missed on here. I get Anyway, I think our battery's getting low. Oh, no, actually, it is charging. It's charging? Yeah. Okay. So. so Michelle says, thank you so much for your guidance and sincere gratitude for your wisdom and love. You are both gifts to humanity. Oh, Aw, thank thanks, you. Michelle. I'm glad we were able to give you some kind of answer there. It's, it's a little difficult, I see, with this new Facebook Live. It's a little difficult to really be able to have an ongoing communication and, and, and everything when we're reading. But it's really cool. I mean, this is my first time on Facebook Live. Thank you for, for having me um, on here. Hey, you're welcome. Um, well, if you guys have any more questions, or if you've typed one that I missed, uh, you can put, put it in right now. Um, otherwise, we'll wrap it up here shortly. Here's a, um, a comment. Selena, I lost my husband last year and feel so lost. How can I see my life again? 
my condolences to you about losing your husband. Sometimes we have to honor the path of the other soul in our relationship. And when it's time for them to go, it's time for them to go. There are no accidents. Um, and know that no one ever dies. No one ever dies. All we do is lift up out of our body. We can either stick around and watch what's going on. We can head back home and get some healing and guidance and come back as a spirit guide. Um, they are always able to watch um, from where they go. And um, what I would encourage you to do is to find out who you are, who your true identity is without being the wife of that person. And that's how you can become whole and complete again um, is by finding yourself and finding out um, most of the time, number one question I get is what is my life purpose? And you talked about the article, Greg, on N5D, but I would say number one, the life, your life purpose is for everyone here is obviously to be incarnated and be grounded and to raise your vibration and open up your heart and be love. So if you can just focus on those things that I just said, finding out who you are, being grounded, healing your heart, opening up your heart again, finding out who you are outside of that marriage, I think that is the lesson for you right now. Here's a question from uh, Susan. Why do so many people speak about Egypt? And it's not just Egypt, it's snakes also. It is. There's a, like a common theme coming up lately. And you, you, you brought it up to me. And uh, I did because it's interesting. Lisa Harrison does uh, a weekly show. And she had mentioned as they were, her and her friends were meditating on this. They realized that they think that we're actually merging with that Egyptian timeline. Um, beginning I think last week and she said her Facebook wall was just blown up with Egypt this and that and people were experiencing snakes in their reality yep. there was a snake on Greg's front porch about a week week and a half ago yeah a live snake a couple days ago in, oh, wasn't yeah it? a couple days a, ago no so it's within that timeline um, and so snakes in Egypt do have uh, a lot to do uh, with that timeline yeah I don't know. Pulling up a snake. I don't know if you can see it on on here or not, but yeah, there, there it is, yeah. right there. Right there on his window, waiting for him. It's right on my windowsill by the front door. Big black snake. So our DNA lineage has snakes and reptilian in it. So I mean, the the Anunnaki family part of the branch of the tree of life is the snake family. Well, but, think think about also the Caduceus is uh, you know DNA. Uh, the, the snakes wrapped up on the caduceus represents DNA, so it could be a very positive thing as well. Yeah, and I think the part of that, uh, the timeline collapsing, is experiencing, going back and experiencing everything and have everything collapsing into one reality so that it can be healed, transmuted, and left behind. And we can expand then and create something new. So I think that's that could be possible that we're that we're experiencing the Egyptian timeline laid over on top of this timeline at the same time. Mm -hmm. Well, gosh. Thank so, um, Greg, who is the person that you have mentioned that you feel Jesus was based on? Wasn't he based on s someone in Jesus? It's so fun to talk to Greg about Jesus. Oh, yeah. Because, uh, he doesn't believe uh, that Jesus existed, and there's really good reason for that. There's no proof that there was a Jesus or that there was even the letter J in the alphabet. That's right. Um, actually, the Jesus character, as I mentioned, was based on a, a person named Yeshua ben Yosef, um, which means Joshua, son of Joseph. So, um, and then, but actual, in actuality, there were so many other ones that preceded that, that had the same story, you know, born to a virgin mother, died on a cross, resurrected after three days, you know, you can go to Horus, Osiris, Dionysus, um, at, at, what was it, Attis, I believe, um, there's, there's nine of them that, that preceded him, same story, over and over, um, and you can find that on, in 5D as well. Well, what I want to say is it doesn't really matter whether Jesus existed or not, what 
we get out of that story is Christ consciousness, what's called Christ consciousness, mm -hmm. and that is the consciousness that is our higher self that we're call it Christ in. consciousness, universal yeah. consciousness, collective consciousness. Yeah, you can call it whatever you want to. Yeah. But yeah, what's important is that we treat each other like we want to be treated. What's important is the messages of the story, and uh, that we don't pray to someone outside of ourselves like Jesus or. Archangel Michael or someone else to fix our problems here on earth. We are incarnated star seeds. We are here to fix this ourselves and we are doing a damn good job. We have another question from Angela Skolan. Uh, can you tell me anything about the elders and the eleventh dimensions? Please. I was told that these two words, I was told these two words in a meditation. The eleventh dimension. Wow. Well, I like the number 11. <laughs> uh, we seem to, in this reality, have uh, 12, 12 dimensions. So the 12th dimension actually is the conglomerate of one dimensions 1 through 11. It is the higher reality, the oversoul level. And um, as far as the elders go, there are councils of elders that are overseeing this earth experiment and this earth project. And a lot of us actually are represent representatives on several of these councils. Yeah, a lot, a lot of, you'd be surprised, um, there are quite a few people who incarnated here from higher dimensions as well. You may be one of those, and you may be one of the members of that council too. That might just, just be something that's coming to you through your meditation. And as I've mentioned for a while now, we're re-remembering that we've done this all before, so this might be a message from you to you <laughs> yeah remember who you are you know some people lots of people don't give themselves enough credit and it's not about having ego and saying oh I'm this incarnate star seed, incarnated starseed and I'm here to save the planet well yeah we are but so are a million two million other people on the planet as mm -hmm. well but just remembering who you are is is very important right now because people don't give themselves enough credit about how powerful they are, what kind of manifestation techniques they have. And the most important thing that I want to give message to everyone here is to remember you are creating your own reality. Your reality is meshed with, through an agreement, someone else's reality and you're kind of like this, you know back and forth, back and forth. When you're together and you're working together or you're, you're in a relationship, you're meshed. And then when you're by yourself, your two realities are right here and they're not meshed. When you're not talking a particular day or you don't see somebody on a particular day. You and another person sitting next to you can hear something on the television or read something and get two different things out of it. So there is no wrong or right. Everyone is in our reality it seems that people are arguing all the time back and forth because everyone wants to prove that they're right and everyone is right because we have to honor and have respect for other people's realities and how they're experiencing something their own way. If it doesn't mesh with yours then you have to make the decision as to whether you're willing to respect that reality and make changes yourself in order to get along or if you need to leave and have your own reality yourself until you figure out how to um, mesh and merge again with someone else. Here we have one from Violet Garcia. Do actual mirrors hold old past energies? I think that depends on how many people have had the mirror, mm -hmm. you know? Um, if Think about this too. Every time you go to the store and you use cash for something, everybody's energy is in that dollar bill that you either give to the cashier or they give back to you. There's energy. You're always bringing in new energies. You can have a clearing done every day, but every day you're picking up more energies. Um, so um, that mirror that you're talking about, yeah, of course, it can hold old energies. The, what if the person that originally bought it is still attached to it and it keeps following that mirror around? It's possible. Anything could happen. Um, but what you can do is um, you can you can smudge and you, you can remove energies from objects like that. So that's what I would recommend. Good answer. 
Well, I think we're winding down to the end here. Would you like me to answer another one? Or? Sure, go ahead. I feel like I'm, I'm sorry, it's Aronema, perhaps the name. I feel like I am seeing and experiencing new things. It's scary. What's the best way to deal with this? Why is it scary? This Face is, it. This is what everybody's wanting uh, right now. As we're merging with dimensions, we're, as we raise our vibrational level from the third up to the fourth and through the fourth and up to the fifth, we're going to be able to see into the fourth dimension um, because we're going to be vibrating through that frequency. Currently, those in the fourth dimension can see us, but we can't see them. Um, but when we raise our vibration through the fourth dimension to the fifth dimension, what will happen is we'll be able to see those beings in the fourth dimension and then see the beings in the fifth dimension and we'll be able to see into the third. But the fourth dimensional frequencies won't be able to see into the fifth dimensional frequencies. That's when you become a superpower, superhuman being who's invisible to the dark forces or the evil forces that are in the fourth dimension. Um, so, what was the... I'm trying to... I'm, uh, we lost it. We yeah, lost, the, lost question. the question. Yeah, I lost the question. So, there should be... When you realize, again, I'm just going to repeat, when you find out and you realize who you really are, an aspect of source, a star seed, a... Uh, a being who seated a part of yourself here into the third dimension to make a difference, to hold a frequency, to help earth and humanity shift just by being incarnated, you should have no fear of anything, including seeing other beings in other dimensions, including um, death because there is no death, including um, dark or evil beings in other dimensions, they can't get to you if you stand in the power of who you are, raise your vibration, and release the fear and programming around the boogeyman. Anything you fear is something, is, is, is an opportunity for spiritual growth. Once you release these fears, you're going to find that your abilities and natural, natural innate abilities are going to exponentially rise. You're, you're going to find that Things that were more difficult in the past become so much easier. You might start seeing orbs. You might see more orbs or um, start communicating with other entities and stuff like that. But you have to face the fears. Some people actually have the fear of these entities and they have the ability of seeing entities but they suppress that because they fear that. But it's really an opportunity for those people as well to help these souls that are on the other side. So just face your fears um, in, in, a, in a way that you feel comfortable doing. You don't have to jump into all of them at once on your own time. Face them and you'll find that that's going to help your spiritual growth more than anything right now. That's good. And um, people want to know, well, when is the veil going to lift? Well, if we're in fear about what we're going to be able to see, then it takes some time for the veil to lift until we're not in fear anymore. So whenever we get out of fear... So here's one from Kia Guia. <laughs> I hope I'm pronouncing that Hi, name. Kaya, Kia. Kaya, Kia, mm -hmm. K-E-I-A. Uh, what practices can I do to increase my intuitive gifts and my manifestation gifts? Uh, gosh, well, I have an article uh, with a video on there that's really cool on how you can accelerate your metaphysical abilities. And one of the ideas that I have here is what you could uh, get at least one other person. It works great with a group of people. If you get like four or five people together um, and you all sit back to back, you're not facing each other. And what you do is you lay out like five different objects. You might have like a rose quartz, uh, clear quartz, um, a pyrex, um, a, a quarter, and um, a nail clipper. And you have like five sets mm -hmm. of them. We'll, we'll just use these for um, examples. So you have five sets of these things and everyone has their own set, but one person picks out one thing. Say I pick up a quarter. Okay, and I put that energy into sending that thought out to everyone, and I might see like a slot machine spitting out quarters or something like that, or a roll of quarters or whatever. I'm sending that energy out, and everybody picks up that that item and they hold it in their hand, and you can tell when everyone's hands out. And then when everyone's made up their decision, you flip your hand over at the same time, and you can see what that what if who got that one correct. 
Now my daughter and I have done this and we'll hit around 80, 85%. If you only have five items, there's a one in five chance, which is 20%. My daughters and I are hitting around 80, 85% uh, of, of uh, being correct. So it's much greater than the law of, of probability and odds. Uh, like I said, odds are only 20%. So that's one way that you can work and practice on that. Of course, as I just mentioned too, you might want to uh, you know ground, keep, keep yourself grounded because once you're grounded with the planet and yourself, you know you're, you're going to find that these abilities will come to you more naturally, um, and and work on releasing all fears. Um, once again, clearing the mind and releasing the fears will bring them on as well. Yeah, knowing who you are, knowing that you, what do you have to fear if? If you know that when you pass out of the body that you never die and you're actually released from this dimension, what really left is there left to fear? I would say that maybe survival, you know, um, money, that that tends to be another fear, but once you learn to manifest, um, there is there should be no fears left. Um, you should be able to know that you're protected, that you've got that you've got a thousand beings behind you, backing you. And um, why don't you tell them about, um, obviously we're, we're also activating our abilities as we bring that light in and, and uh, activate our DNA. Why don't you tell them about um, your intentions with uh, water and uh, what you do to activate your DNA? Because I think we've really had levels of DNA activations as we've known each other now for about four years. I've seen mm -hmm. both of us activate more levels of our DNA. Yeah, I have an article on this on how to activate your DNA. I spoke about this on the uh, our superpower activation conference. But in general, um, what you can do is put, place your intentions in water. And what I use is um, I have an ozone machine, and I use alkaline water. So you spin it around one direction, and you'll say your affirmation. For me, all of my codons are open. And I also use reversals in that because I, I believe that you can use that for the good. And I'll say in reversal and spinning in the opposite direction, Nipo era snodak yimphala, which means the same thing as it is forward, all of my codons are open. But we all know about Dr. Masaru Emoto and what thoughts and intentions does on water. And it's been proven that it, it, it's everything. What, the water listens to you. It's almost as if it's saying, your wish is my command. So when you place those thoughts and intentions into water, it's huge. Um, so make sure you do that. Uh, you know, no matter whether it's water, even if you're drinking a beer, or <laughs> it doesn't matter. Whatever you're drinking or ingesting, place those intentions into it, and uh, make sure that um, it's coming from the heart, and the liquid will listen. I have something funny to share. You know, we go to sleep and we wake up every day, and we kind of we our memory kind of gets wiped every time we come back through the veil and wake up. Um, so on my cell phone. I have a daily reminder every day to talk to my DNA and activate it. So I like to do that when I'm water because we talked about water earlier, how water can magnify your intentions and how it can truly connect you and ground you. So I just do that in the bathtub or when I'm uh, out in the pool or in the ocean. And I just, um, I just uh, ask the universe that to all of my codons are open, that I activate my DNA and a lot of us have activated DNA already, but it's kind of like on hold until we get to the next level of our group all coming up together so that um, some things are turned on and some things aren't for our own good right now. So it's not like um, because you don't think you have these abilities right now, it's not like your DNA isn't activated. Everyone is receiving light into their cells, into their DNA. Um, but it's just the timing of things uh, for them to unfold can be a little bit longer than what you, what we hoped. So, and don't feel like just because somebody else has abilities that you don't, that you're not doing what you need to do. That's everybody's different. Everybody's in their own reality right now. So, yeah. and be careful what you wish for. Uh, also, you know, if you really want to see entities and talk to them, know that they're going to be there 24/7. Do you really want that? Yeah. See. <laughs> Yeah, because really, you know, like it might distract from what you're actually here to do. And some of us really, in order to, to lift the, the lowest third dimensional experience in the universe, we really needed to be 3D. We really needed to grow up um, in some of the deepest, darkest places 
because we're lifting everything from the base up. So, um, so if we had, uh, if I had grown up and been able to see my star brothers and sisters, I wouldn't want to be here. I'd want to go with them, and I knew that before I incarnated. So I said, no, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna see them. I'm gonna insert myself into 3D and forget, so that I bring the base up in my reality. So we have a couple more questions here. I know we have a lot more than that. I've missed a shitload. But, um, You'll catch them on the next one. Yes. Jacqueline Plattner is asking, how can we help people raise vibration if people we love don't believe in the shift? Well, you just already answered the question with uh, the question, and that is love. Love is the highest, unconditional love is the highest vibration that we can experience here in 3D. And so, you know, basically by honoring their path, knowing that everyone has is experiencing their own reality and is on, here for from different places for different reasons and on a different level of uh, understanding or ascension. Um, you know, once you master yourself and you begin to learn to react differently to your family, you're not triggered with anger, you're not embarrassed about, you know, um, the woo-woo things that you're into, um, you're not embarrassed to talk about chemtrails and things like that. So once you master that, then I think you can insert yourself back into a family relationship and just support other people and give them unconditional love. Keep your vibration high, first and foremost. Keep your vibration high. They're going to pick up off of that regardless whether they believe in the shift or not. You're going to be the mirror. You're going to be that beacon that I was talking about earlier on that card, that angel card. You're going to be that beacon that sends the light out, and they're going to pick up on it and just soak it right up. So, yeah, yeah. that would be my answer. I think that's a good one. Okay. Well, are we about done? I think we have one more that we're going to cover. Okay. And it's from Carl Streiner. Numerology is a great subject. Having premonitions like myself is becoming a weekly experience. Do you both have? Ex do you both experience premonitions? I do. Um, I get a lot of them. I get not not just waking, but in dreams and stuff like. That. I see things before they happen, and I've shared many of them on N five D. I had a premonition when I was fifteen years old that came true, and it scared the crap out of me. I I had a dream about a woman, a girl who uh, got injured and it happened just like in my dream and I thought I caused it and I think I kind of shut that down within myself but I think the different way of premonition that I've had and that we have is sometimes um, we'll, we'll in the morning we'll talk about a certain subject and sure enough that whole subject will unfold throughout our whole day mm -hmm. so it's almost like you know Greg likes to say we've already done this before Re remembering so yeah deja vu premonitions, these are all um, effects of being a timeline jumper and a timeline shifter and knowing uh, when we're asleep our higher selves are uh, working with us to program our day for the next day because we've already pretty much done it so giving us hints and thoughts so we know what's coming during the day. One thing that I want to talk about though is people that have premonitions of bad things and they wonder what they're supposed to do about it and um, that's a real tricky one because I'm not sh so sure that there's anything that you're really supposed to do about it unless it involves you and then you, you maybe you know, know that something's going to happen so you take a different route to work or you're a little bit late um, and you miss an accident by like two minutes or something like that. When it comes to other people, you're not really supposed to interfere in someone else's reality in, unless you have their permission. So those are really tricky ones. That's got to be tough for a psychic that sees things like mm -hmm. that. They know something bad's going to happen, but you don't want to put it out there and create that reality. And timelines change. What if you were wrong? You don't. You don't want timelines do change yeah. very quickly now too. So, yeah, yeah, they're changing like that. So it is kind of tricky. Yeah, it is tricky. Um, but you know, that's a good question. That, that's though. a great question. And on that one, I think we're going to uh, wrap it up for now. It's been fun. It's been really fun. I'm Thanks very for grateful. Me You're very welcome. Very grateful for everyone showing up that joined us for this live chat um, and everyone that's joining us on the recorded version as well. Um, so I'll be going back through again and trying to catch up on the, all the questions that I inevitably missed, <laughs> as I always do. <laughs> I, I'm trying, everyone. I'm trying to get everyone out there and. Uh, 
get all your questions answered. You know, Greg, you've got all these hearts just and all these smiling love, faces. Love, all love. this love. People oh, yeah. are just sending you so yeah. much love. I love it. Thank you so much everyone for tuning in to, to Greg. He's he's got great vibes and you're getting uh, you're getting good uh, DNA activations from him every time. <laughs> yeah, that's true. I, apparently, uh, something about my voice and my facial recognition is giving you guys upgrades. That's so. what star seeds do, and you guys can do the same. Yeah. Get on your own Facebook Live. Let us watch you. We'd love to watch you and say mm -hmm. hi. All right. So once again, thank you everyone for joining us. Namaste, everyone. Have a blessed day. Bye.